Hundreds of investors stream into Cameroon for the fourth edition of the Islamic Center for Development of Trade Invest Days. The National Promotion Investment Agency has injected 6,000 billion silver francs to uplift local enterprises. Crisscrossing cities on board motorbikes, overcrowded vehicles, and school buses. The task is hideous for commuters exposed to dangers, missing appointments, and losing money. The 730 News explores options for mass transportation in Metropolis. Thoroughly planned layouts for urban, suburban, and rural areas by 2035. Town planners and rural land development experts discuss the possibilities in Yaoundé and this rapid demographic growth. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. Thanks for joining us. I'm Esther Kima. Over 500 investors from 56 countries of the Organization of the Islamic Cooperation are in Cameroon to source for investment opportunities in agriculture, fishing, forestry, renewable energy, and mining. This is on the occasion of the fourth edition of the Islamic Center for Development of Trade Invest Days, ongoing at the Yaoundé Conference Center. It is co-organized with the Cameroon Investments Promotion Agency and highlights Cameroon as a reliable and attractive business destination. Beatrice Losamba has the details. Yaoundé, an investor's trap. Over 500 of them have landed in the capital city from 56 member countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The Islamic Organization has a lot of financing and a lot of big investors. The Gulf countries, for example, and that's where money is now in the world. So when we bring the Islamic Cooperation to Cameroon, we are doing something to open up our economy to new investors, you know, who are also interested in investing in our import substitution schemes. The business tycoons are after the stable and reliable trade environment and the wide range of opportunities of investments Cameroon offers in the fields of agriculture, mining, renewable energy, fisheries and a lot more. I hope to find some uh, partenaria and uh, importer for, for, uh, for our f frozen fish. The fourth edition of the ICTD Invest Days is expected to be a magnet to economic and trade partnerships among these investors of the OIC member states, a forum which also promotes regional integration. In this region, we have uh, very big companies that are investing now in, uh, in the world, so our mission, our objective is to reorient these investments, especially in Cameroon. Situated at the crossroads to West and Central Africa and having signed trade agreements in ECOWAS, ECAS, SEMAC and the African Continental Free Trade Area, Cameroon has a vast market of over 300 million people and is thus an irresistible investment destination. And to augment the performance of local enterprises, a total of 6,000 billion CFA friends has been provided as assistance to some 400 business institutions by the National Investment Promotion Agency. Aside this aid, over 150,000 jobs have been created with the office committed to accompany investors and to project Cameroon as an investment hub in the Central African sub-region. Emmanuel Avemui caught up with some beneficiaries and tells their successes. Three investors, three investment experiences from a single investment agency. These business owners are today excelling in domains considered priority in Cameroon due to the assistance of the investment promotion agency. Many of the facilities have been available to us. Having other contact through them, matching with other companies abroad, we had to pay taxes for our imports at once, but API helped us pay in installments and this helped us create hundreds of jobs. Their footprints are visible in the economic life of Cameroon, mining, transportation, agriculture, you name them. Beneficiaries of their works are counted in hundreds. Their assistance had direct impact on our activities in all the production chain, even employees, and the final product became cheaper. Competitive. We have recorded over 400 projects or investors, be local or foreign, 
already who are benefiting from, from incentives of over 6 trillion francs CFA for over 150 jobs to be created. The Cameroon Investment Promotion Agency sells destination Cameroon to investors and even offers aftercare services. We engage into investment facilitation like health, education, agriculture. Either you, you export 10 to 25 percent of, of your products, 10 to 25 percent of local resource value, you could at least a job for a Cameroon for a certain degree of investments which you engage. Success stories officials are confident will keep multiplying with the assistance accorded to investors by the agency in Cameroon. And now onto the second shot of our running series on Cameroon's mining potential. We zoom in on the first closed circuit for the processing of gold, which is operational in the locality of Kete in the East region. The system is basically intended to regulate mining activities in a manner that guarantees the protection of the population and the preservation of the environment. Larry Snane, a porter, reports that its implementation has considerably improved security and safety. The closed unit for gold processing was instituted following the irreparable damages caused to plants and humans with the use of hazardous and precarious mining techniques. Prior to this method, the open system which was implemented by mining firms led to the loss of close to 70% of the raw material, resulting in an output described as way below existing potential. Almost six months after the machinery began functioning in Kete, Kadei Division of the East Region, there are less worries about a great environmental footprint due to mining. We process the minerals without major impact on nature. All the products we use here are well treated before being deposited. The waste is being stocked and treated again before we dump them off. Gold mining stakeholders emphasize a considerable leap from 30 to 90 and even 95 percent in their yields with the use of the facility. Deposits, which end up in nature, go through a process that brings out more of the precious commodity with little leftovers for dumping. On the parcel with this system, we spend less and gain more. There is a way in which we extract the minerals with 70 percent of the gold extracted. Once we treated the remaining 30% minerals stocked in waste, we are still able to extract more gold from the waste. Ten of such structures are expected from other gold mining sites across the country. The goal of the state is to ensure that the sector contributes its fair share to state revenue with lives and the environment preserved. The 730 News tonight focuses on the transportation burden faced by the population during the school resumption period. In the nation's capital, Yaoundé, pupils and students opt for motorbikes to get to school. Their safety is questionable as the majority of riders are notorious for overspeeding and overloading. Victor Sige reports that the choice is based on affordability while the riders attribute the attitude to minimal pay. A loaded bike on excessive speed. For this biker, money comes first, putting the life of students at risk. This is a common practice in the city of Yaoundi as learners head to school every morning. The school picking they know they pay fine. But I would just help them to see the school picking them. At least for this school period, we appreciate the award and the way they give them. Because at least it can be quick. Amid overloading, overspeeding, or dangerous overtaking, both users and bikers are pointing fingers at the morning traffic that makes most learners go late to school. I will go for my bashe so that we go, we come back, we get benefit because the bond patrol go, I want to come back, you come back empty. And two people will come, we play, they go at 2.50, they can't pay now, 1.50. You will be forced to for, try for make them for three. If some find pleasure in the risky riding of some bikers, others have learned the lesson. Boy, more about the taxi. I prefer taking a taxi than a bike because most bikers are youth who are not conscious of the risk of overloading and excessive speeding. I leave my house very early so I can take a taxi in order to reach school on time. I have been a victim of a bike accident when I was in Form 1. Since then I stopped taking bike. Even when I am too late for school and it happens that I have to take a bike, I avoid use. Elders ride safer. The problem of overloading, overspeeding and even dangerous overtaking it's a canker worm which the forces of law and order have never relented efforts in regulating these malpractices. 
Conscious of the risk involved in going in for a motorbike ride, some parents settle for the school bus. Parents who had heard to the offer and made it is safer, convenient and somewhat affordable. But that doesn't come without setbacks like late pickups and frequent breakdowns that leave people sometimes stranded. Rahanatu Sali sat through one of the rides and reports that pickup begins as early as 6 a.m. Engine on, wheels turning. Little Shana hops on the bus and route to school. It is 7 a.m. and this school bus is doing its usual rounds, picking up people who's around town. The first child I'm picking 6 o'clock in the morning. Before 7.30, I'm with everybody in school. So I have six places that I'm going to. I carry 32 children in the morning, but in the afternoon there are many, so I do two tons in the, in the afternoon. At transit, children have to arm themselves with patience. Those already in the bus have to make space for others. I subscribe for the bus because it is safe and less expensive than bikes and taxis. It's never a smooth ride. There are potholes on the way, the rowdiness and late pickup. I'm very disappointed with the service because since I subscribed, the bus has picked up my kid only five times. If uh, maybe there's a delay with the bus, we see into that uh, another bus goes and carry the children. The final destination is not the school campus. It is the lessons learned during the trip. A WhatsApp group has been created for each uh, for each bus, meaning that each driver is having a WhatsApp group where he communicate with the parents there on daily basis and then update them so in case there's any breakdown, something they should be aware. Very important given that how they get to school determines how the rest of the day looks like for these pupils. And the hurdles that come with transporting the population from one area to the other expose the urgency to implement mass transit projects in the country's metropolis. This will rid the major cities of the current overcrowding heavy traffic and financial loss due to delays. Prince Will Mukwele Aduma reports on the different travel technologies that can fit into the modernization dream of a city like Yaoundé. Days of school resumption this year. Yaoundé taking off guard. Traffic brought to bear on the growing population of over 4 million taxis and motorbikes not enough. Two ways are earmarked for mass transit in Yaoundé, the north, south and east, west corridors. The previewed technologies include modern trains, tramways and urban transport buses. Yaoundé has uh, uh, a master plan and, uh, uh, and land use plans, but all those tools are not implemented. Sounds like complementing the Yaoundé Label project, where the Yaoundé and Simaleng motorway is expected to work for the modern Yaoundé city with its accompanying overpass bridges, interchanges, and numerous traffic circles. Yet, we must have a tramway in Yaoundé, which so 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 that we can use. But for that, we can use the the, the railway still exist and uh, improve and make that this tramway be implemented in, in order to, to improve uh, this uh, the mobility, yes, the city mobility. But again, breaking eggs for such elephant omelette seems to delay implementation. Le transport Mass transit requires space. Unfortunately, available space has been taken up in Yaoundé. That notwithstanding, persons affected by such projects can simply be relocated. Within the 2011 presidential promise of turning the country into a huge construction site is the Yaoundé Douala motorway project. Just like it, the Kribi Industrial Zone testaments of ongoing modernization where mass transportation is a welcomed must. And I'll take you over to the Star Building where members of the Donga Mantung Fonts Union have pledged to organize a peace caravan to cement the bond of unity between indigenous population and the Mbororo community. This was during a meeting with the Prime Minister Head of Government, Joseph John Gute, today where the traditional rulers vowed to eject the spirit of division promoted by ill-intentioned persons. The president of the Donga Mantung Fonts Union, Jofo Maurice D, presents details of the Peace Crusade. Take a listen.
Our purpose is to have the Prime Minister endorse our project of a meeting followed by a caravan for peace, reconciliation of the natives and the rural community. The caravan shall be organized on the 12th of October 2024 in Kambe. We will have a number of resolutions and a caravan will be filled with a declaration. The natives and the Mboro community were in very good relation of a certain groups of unidentified young men interfere, claiming to belong to Mboro or to belong to the natives. So the meaning of our caravan is to tell them that we, the natives and the Mboro community, we are one, and that our peaceful coexistence that has existed must continue. The Prime Minister has been very happy. He has appreciated the initiative. And on to international cooperation encouraging the Cameroonian diaspora based in France to invest back home has been the focus of discussions between the presidents of the Parliamentary Network for the Diaspora Decentralized and Cross-Border Cooperation and a delegation of French parliamentarians. Honorable Louis Hohingacha and the President Delegates of the Parliamentary Assembly of La Francophonie in charge of the French language, Honorable Amelia Lacrafi, also reviewed cooperation between the two countries. Clarence Ngwe tells us more. On the September 23, 2024, the French lawmaker of Moroccan origin, Lafcrafi Amelia, heading a delegation of French nationals in a face-to-face -face exchange with Honorable Louis Aringancha and his followers, both shared ideas on how to collaborate in encouraging the Cameroonian diaspora in France to invest back home. Reports president emphasized on the importance of the move. The network this far has received 512 members from the diaspora, shedding more light on Repcode's activities for the last five years. The vice president of the parliamentary network reiterated their desire for an effective outreach exchange our views on the issues like uh, local development, what diaspora can bring to us back home in Cameroon in terms of uh, local uh, uh, finances. And you know very well that our councils need to upgrade the ways and means of looking at local uh, finances. With both parties taking a firm commitment to bring forth palpable results. And as we announce one of our top stories, town planners are seeking ways of transforming Cameroon's urban, suburban, and rural areas by 2035 with officials of the Urban and Rural Land Development and Equipment Mission, Mayo 2, they propped into accessing essential services, points of interest, and amenities for improved quality of life. But how can poor town planning rife in the country be handled amidst rapid demographic growth? Beaches and Goom, Beaches Los Samba. Finds out. Cameroon's urbanization rate in major cities is projected at 65% according to UN Habitat. But urban infrastructure and social services to meet the needs of citizens are not commensurate. Could be in terms of flooding, in terms of uh, traffic jam, in terms of pollution. So those issues we are quite familiar with are just a uh, manifestation of poor planning. 65% of the urban population still lives in shanty towns. Neighborhoods are growing in an anarchical manner. Government is blamed for not implementing its town planning policy and citizens victims of their ignorance. When the city is well organized, uh, the council used to put in place some information boards to, to inform the population that in this area, for instance, this is what we are planning to do. So communications it is very important in implementing urban regulations. Consequently, to salvage the phenomenon of poor urban development, town planners, the Urban and Rural Land Development and Equipment Mission, and the Ministry of State Property, Surveys and Land Tenure are working in close collaboration. So this symposium is bringing together the various actors in the domain of urban development so as to reflect with regards to problems that our cities are facing presently. The Urban Renewal Program of the National Development Strategy also gives orientations on what has to be done to promote low-cost housing schemes nationwide and make Cameroon attractive. And that was definitely Beatrice Ngum reporting.
Eight youth have been apprehended and currently in police custody for the murder of a young man in the Bali neighborhood of Douala. The members of the delinquent group called Mikrop terrorizing the inhabitants of Douala were uncovered after an investigation was opened. Literal Governor Samuel Judene Ivaha Deboa in a press briefing says the men of the underworld will be no down, tracked down. Here's an excerpt. The force of law went to the field and took some of them. One was just having in his house a identity cards of a victim. The other one, pre-night, and many other things that are showing that their job is to kill people. There are eight of them that are at the judiciary police office. All of them are just begging a pardon, but there's no pardon because somebody is killed. There's no way to go to the social media and say that Douala is not a living place. Intensified security measures pain of the in Douala. In education, Cameroon's universities have been challenged to foster professionalism and job creation to fit the demands of the professional world. This was at an education forum chaired by the Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famendongo. The deliberations took place on the theme, the establishment of entrepreneurial universities in private higher education sector in Cameroon. Juliana Befolo has the details. Stakeholders of the education sector, it is a dream come to reality. The notion of the establishment of entrepreneurial universities. It's a notion that came to me before the official concept was authorized in Cameroon. In the scope of my job as a lawyer, that I realized that there was a niche in the creation of my own job in the domain of education. The initiative seeks to transform higher institutions into enterprises with profitable skills to both themselves and the nation. We are training students in agronomy. They grow, for example, maize, and we transform this maize to feed animals. We have the different fields of study, beginning from fashion, clothing, and textile. We are into home economics uh, and hotel management. The minister congratulated the efforts of private higher institutions, but much is still awaited. I am very happy, very delighted by what I have seen. But I ask the students and universities, state and private, the more create jobs. The forum brought together education stakeholders, officials of the Ministry of Higher Education, and delegations from various higher institutions across the national territory. Elsewhere, over 5,000 birth certificates for school-going children will be established in the coming days. This has been facilitated by the Cameroon Education Forum Support Project, an initiative applauded by the Minister of Basic Education, Professor Laurent Sege, Etuningwa, today. Florence Ngomba Nanyongo has the details. The implementation of the Cameroon Education Reform Support Project has been noted with an execution rate of 60% following the last term review of June 2023. This year's session aimed to assess the level of implementation over the period January to June. This ordinary session usually is an evaluation of the work that we are supposed to have been doing in the project. We are also going to look at the recommendations that were uh, raised during the session that preceded. A special operation to establish and issue birth certificates to Class 6 pupils in public schools was launched in March this year as 48,232 pupils benefited and took part in the end-of-year examinations. The World Bank assisted us last year to ensure that all the kids who are in Class 6 have their birth certificates. The minister also elaborated on the flood situation in the far north region which has affected schools and teachers, adding that the committee is working to provide support for both parties. And in professional studies, over 100 candidates studying for the entrance examination of the Audiovisual Heritage Training and Conservation Institute of CRTV today. They will be taking part in the oral session tomorrow in all the 10 regions of Cameroon and are quiz on media and digital professions. Solange Awasom reports. 
Experts bowed in concentration. Over 100 candidates are shaping their futures as they tackle the entrance examination for the Audiovisual Heritage Training and Conservation Institute, EFCPR, on the CRTV, prepared and determined. They are eager to secure a spot in one of the country's most sought-after media institutions. The general knowledge they ask inside is quite diverse, but they touch uh, many other subjects of society. I chose to do uh, directing. The EFCPR provides a wide range of courses, from journalism and video editing to emerging fields such as digital innovation, keeping pace with the latest industry advancements. Uh, everything is well. Uh, we have uh, three uh, papers uh, for, for the writing part of our test. So we have uh, another uh, entrance examination on the 15th of October. In the calm, focused atmosphere of the exam hall, candidates are giving their best efforts. Results will be based on merit, with oral assessments continuing until September 26 across other CRTV's regional stations. In culture news, a delegation of members of the French Development Agency, led by the Director of Cultural and Creative Industries, Caroline Dole, have been granted audience by Arts and Culture Minister Bidun Pat. The focus of their exchange was the modernization of the National Museum, which preserves the artifacts of Cameroon's history and preserves the rich cultural heritage and diversity. The project, which is hailed by the state, will enable culture lovers have a perfect hold of the country's ancestral background. And still in culture, the internationally acclaimed Cameroonian singer and artist Salin Yolo has presented her book project to the Minister of Arts and Culture, Bidung Pat. The series of 10 bilingual books combines words, vibrant illustrations and music to pass on her message. Salin Yolo presents her project on the 730 News. I had to do something to make our children want to read books again. That's why I added something extra to books. Today, children love surfing on the web. They don't like listening to music. They also enjoy looking at pictures. I had to find a common vector between words, well-illustrated drawings, films, and music. Elsewhere, the new representative and country director of the World Food Program in Cameroon, Ferreira Gianluca, has been granted audience by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Mbairobe. She exposed the World Food Program's commitments to support farmers, especially in the northern regions, in order to attain food sufficiency. Here's an excerpt. Uh, we discussed the current challenges the country is confronted with, especially the floods in the north uh, that are indeed affecting a significant chunk of the population. The possibility to support um, uh, the recovery of the agricultural production in the country and the way the WFP can uh, use our purchasing power uh, to, um, to promote agricultural transformation. In my term, him, I really would like to do more in terms of local food procurement, build up our partnership with the cooperative, the farm farmers themselves and uh, using the school feeding and our regional procurement uh, to achieve uh, this, those objectives. Ferreira Gianluca talking there to the CRTV. In sports, the Army and Police FAB basketball team are the winners of the Championship and Cup of Cameroon for the 2024 season. The team emerged unbeatable and grabbed two trophies in the four finals scheduled. Romeo and Kenny reports on their impressive performance. Four teams ended the basketball season in the senior category mounting the podium. The championship produced winners worth representing Cameroon in international competitions next year. It took Kaji Sports Academy a last grabs to clinch the title over Fap Yaoundé during the last playing day in the men's crucial game. The team of the Army and Police Fap revenge in the women's outing to finish first in ranking and be crowned league champions of the season. The storyline was different in the Cameroon Cup hostilities. The girls of Daniel Batistong were a major revelation, winning the coveted trophy in front of the University of Douala. They aren't a powerhouse in basketball in the country, but are already on good footing. The battle was rough in the men's cracker. However, Fap of Yaoundé succeeded stamping authority against AF. The finals were also platforms of showcasing individual talent. Eben Suzanne of Daniel Batistong and Cyril Liali of Fap Yaoundé displayed scintillating performances 
during the finales. Sports, the 2024 National Games Dob Dixiad will take place in Yaoundé from December 11 to 21. The official logo of the upcoming National Games was unveiled, while Sports Federation heads and athletes were challenged to ensure sports is a vector of peace, unity and social cohesion. Romeo Kenny once again reports on the meeting chaired by the president of the Cameroon National Olympic and Sports Committee, Kennel Kalkaba Malbum. 2024 Dixiat official logo is a representation of the reunification monument blended with a drum beneath and the Olympic flame on its apex. The national games in Yaoundé will run from December 11 to 21. The logo has been unanimously endorsed by all seven members of the third executive bureau session of the Cameroon National Olympic and Sports Committee. The Independence Square will host the opening and closing ceremonies. Cameroon's recent outing at the Olympic Games in Paris, flanked by poor results, was also a concern. Meanwhile, the need to respect sport ethics was discussed. The government is doing its efforts, but because it needs a lot of money. But if we should rely all of us together, we come together to look at the reality, then we can plan better our activities. Sport has its, its own language. Sport has its own rules. We must respect the rules, otherwise we are not using sports as a, um, the tool for building brotherhood, friendship and peace. So this is something that we need to consider, maybe for educating the stakeholders in the sport movement in Cameroon. The members ended the meeting with the resolve to keep working hard toward the effective professionalization of diverse sport disciplines in the country. In this advertorial, the 2024-2025 academic year is effective for first-cycle students of the Sianti University Institute of Yaoundé. The official opening took place in the presence of the school officials and partners from the International School of Business and Engineering in France. Maimouna Njoya reports that the students were equally urged to shun drug abuse. It's been 33 years of discipline, innovative and improved teaching at the Siantu University Institute in Yaoundé and in an effort to render its students more competitive on the job market, a partnership agreement has been signed with the ISBE, the International School of Business and Engineering in France, to enable students follow a two-fold training in digital strategy and management in Yaoundé and Paris successively. This year, the Sciences University Institute will be fully digitized since we will have what's called an ERP. It's basically a system from which students, faculty alike, will be able to access all the resources. While launching the new academic year for the first cycle, the promoter of the Siantu University Institute, Honorable Lucien Wantu Siantu, enjoined the freshmen and older higher national diploma aspirants to work hard enough to suit current professional exigencies. Our students will have the opportunity not only to have a double degree, they'll also be able to study and work at the same time and be paid. After throwing light on some internal rules relating to punctuality and assiduity, the students were told to shy away from drug abuse, indecent dressing and hairstyling. Registrations are ongoing for master's programs and learners interested in fields such as cyber security and artificial intelligence are called upon to choose the Siantu University Institute, which alongside international institutions is also partnering with the National Advanced School of Engineering Polytechnic in Yaoundé. And that ends our half-hour newscast in which you principally heard that hundreds of investors have streamed into Cameroon for the fourth edition of the Islamic Center for Development of Trade in First Days. Romeo Chusengok will be yours at 8.30 p.m. for the news. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. but our programs continue on the CRTV. Stay tuned. Good night and thanks for watching.